Hi Year 12, welcome back from the trials. We've been in the marking process and we've decided to have a look at this particular Module A question with regard to some of the responses that we've seen and the level of engagement with this question. So, I've, on the PowerPoint slide here, I've tried to put everything that was on an A4 page for you. And as you can see, there's a fair bit of text. We've got two large quotes. In fact, you know, they're uh, quite solid extracts from both the Bee Box and the Bee God. And our question, explain the centrality of the recurring images of the textual conversation between Sylvia Platt's Ariel and Ted Hughes' birthday letters. There's a lot going on here. I want to take you through the boxes and prongs strategy again to try and help you tap into the key terms and demands of the question so that you can be agile and, and bring what you've prepared to the exam to do your best. Because we did see a lot of students in this particular section ignoring certain parts of this question. Some students didn't realise that refer to the quotations actually meant the, the two extracts here and, and ignored the extracts. Most people uh, use recurring images effectively, but some people miss this whole idea of centrality, which really links into the module. I'll go back. Some people didn't really address this term centrality, which really links into uh, the module and the value of textual conversations. So I want to take you through this idea of boxes, which compartmentalise the question and prongs in terms of links and being able to link and tap into. So here's just the question without the quotes. The boxes and prongs I've done already and I'm asking students to rather than just highlight or underline actually draw boxes. This idea then of centrality if you've drawn a box around this even if you drew a blank initially and thought mm, what, what, what is that by doing three prongs straight away you're going to think okay it's going to tap you into what the word might mean so Straight away, we see central. Okay, this idea of it being central. So the central images that are shaped or reshaped. And then, then hopefully it would ask you, is, are the images actually central to the conversations? Some of you might argue that yes, they are. Some of you might argue, because you've prepared, that it's actually the power of voice and the provocative confessional voice of Plath with, met with the accusatory tone of Hughes that is actually central. And therefore the images take a supplementary and supporting role. So you'd be using shorthand to uh, write what you've agreed with here. You might be able to come in and then have another synonym. So you're not always saying centrality. Some other words might be that it's the, it's the core or it's the essential aspect uh, at the conversations. It's the revolving. It's at the heart and centre. Okay, the recurring images. These are the things that you've probably already been focusing on. That shouldn't have been too difficult and we could see that a lot of people tapped into that even without doing this strategy. So we saw images of containment or entrapment and I'm using ones that we've seen a lot of. Some people vary obviously. And then this idea of liberation or transformation. And that allows you then to come in and have some synonyms or perhaps you've got another thesis point. Some of you had images of suffering that all worked. Textual conversation. Okay, so this is really getting at the module focus. 
Not that you need to write that, but you should know that, but I'm just trying to talk you through. So we have this idea of Plath establishing okay, the conversation, the dialogue, opening it up through these images. And then depending on whether you're arguing whether the images are central, then Hugh's taking those up and recasting the images or recontextualising, pulling Plath back into the domestic fear from more of the wider world context, for example. And then the value, your appreciation of this question here, coming back to whether you believe Hughes is actually silencing uh, Plath in the conversation, shutting her voice down, or even if he might be doing that, in just the, the value of the textual conversations, in fact, be rebirthing, whereby the Ariel collection is uh, re-gifted. So really what we're trying to do is empower all the knowledge that you have, because we're seeing so much great work on the page, but it's just not transferring as that close, explicit engagement that is really going to get you into the A's and get you into those high marks. Refer to the quotation. So if you've drawn a box around that, you couldn't have really ignored them. It, it would have alerted you to that. So I'm going to take you through those in a minute. But straight away you might go, okay, veils, locks. Uh, again, these ideas of liberation or suffering that tap into your thesis up here. So in, in putting that box around, uh, refer to the quotations, looking back up on the page, again, use the boxes. So for example, for example, use the boxes. Uh, it's asked you to, to tap into images. So draw boxes around images that stand out to you that fit your thesis. These ideas of containment with uh, the idea of locks, the, the funeral veil, a, a, a image of suffering, the idea of liberation and the box only be temporary. So there's your thesis in, in those four great images. And then in Hughes recasting the veil, he's recasting these ideas of veils as disguises or facades and needing them to strip off uh, as we've got the veil off, the gloves off, the blind arrow locked onto my brow, this idea that uh, his, uh, these images now uh, pertain to him and his sense of entrapment and being as fixed as the stars, this idea of fate. So again, we're hoping that this strategy will work for you in the lead up to the HSC in practicing. It takes practice, okay? Do it with your friends, do it with your teachers, do it on your own. I'll be giving you a list of questions to practice uh, so that you can really get the most out of the exam situation, engage with the question and do as well as you can. Thank you.